Museum of Modern Art, and we're looking at Matisse's painting from 1911 called The Red Studio. An oddly empty painting, but not surprisingly, a very red painting, <laughs> given the title. <laughs> it's a, yeah. and red is normally a color that uh, might be kind of scary or violent, but it doesn't feel so here at all. No, and when you see the painting in person, the red is really a kind of a deep red, right? It's almost a dark red. Yeah. The paintings inside it are bright. That's true. And these are Matisse's paintings. And it, then there's no sense of violence or fear at all. In fact, it feels very contemplative and kind quiet, of quiet yeah, actually. Yeah, it does. Well, it's his studio, right? And he had built this in E.C. in a suburb of Paris, uh, beside his house. And this is his private space, and these are his, you know, his the world that he inhabits, I think in some ways very much his interior world. And he's chosen to make it look quiet and like an interior contemplative space where certain things stand out and other things recede and maybe he's telling us something about what's important to him in this personal artistic so, space. So maybe what do you the, see the space important? of his unconscious. I think that that's right because there isn't anything sort of front and center that's really sort of dominant in this painting. It's a lot of things in a sense that we can choose from. Right. It's almost like he's giving us a little menu. It's right. Without a, a centralized composition. Or maybe this is what it feels like in Matisse's head. Well, that's These little isolated items that come together in this one space, but without a real focal point. You know, our eye moves from the lower left up and around to the lower right. And Actually we kind following of follow. the clock, right? That's true. Which is, a clock which has no hand. That's true, but I do kind of, you're right, I do kind of look at the whole painting in a kind of clockwise motion. I start in the lower left, and I do. I, I wrap myself around looking at his paintings and, and the other things that actually have color in the, in the canvas. There's that cutting of nasturtium in the vase on the table in the foreground. Right, and it looks like some crayons, maybe? some crepas or something like that in the lower right corner of the table and a plate and that a That he had painted, it looks like, right? Right, it looks like mostly what we have here are actual works of art by or Matisse the things, himself. Or the things that he uses to make art. Well, like the crayons that you pointed out. And then is that, I think there's it's a vase of brushes perhaps in the in mm -hmm. the background on the, on the bureau. The chair is also kind of stands out. Yeah, and the chair is always sort of funny for Matisse because, you know, he had made that comment which he got a lot of grief for ultimately. About an armchair? Yes. That art being something a comfortable, that, like in a comfortable right. old armchair. Right. That's right. And there is something I think that is very restive here. Yeah, it's true. I, you can almost, when you think about Matisse's paintings, you can think about a nude. You almost imagine a nude odalisque, almost, or a semi-nude odalisque in that chair. Yeah. Yeah. And there is, and there is an odalisque of sorts. If you look directly above the chair, there's that brown figure, which is wonderfully pushed over, leaning, which is actually an actual sculpture that Matisse had done just a couple of years earlier, called Serpentine. And we have three nudes in the upper right. Right. We have, looks like a portrait above the dresser and a still life above the dresser. That's and then the sailor, the actually. Sailor, the sailor, right? yeah. And then we have another image of nudes leaning against the dress dresser in the back. Yeah. And then we have another nude. The large in a chair. pink one. Now, the large pink one, I, I remember reading, this is interesting, that, that this was a painting that Matisse actually destroyed soon after this painting was made. Huh. This, the rest of it was made. And this is actually, in some ways, I think the best quality reproduction we have of its original colors. Of what in the last, like. Matisse was revising it because he often did that he often in his paintings included other paintings and actually created sort of derivations of those originals right. in the new paintings right. yeah. the artwork stands out and the furniture is almost like a ghost in this space so it's like nature the nude art are the things that emerge and those are one of a kind for Matisse I mean it's I don't think he so much separates art I think that's and exactly nature right. and the female the nude. nude especially exactly right? I think those are, in a sense, the, the same, same thing. thing They're synonyms. Him. It's yes. all about sensuality, visual sensuality. It's true. So this painting is about that kind of sensuality, and yet it's also got these modern interpretations that are pushed on top of it, which are actually very analytic and very sort of strict. What kind of interpretations do well, you mean? Well, a moment ago, you were talking about the way in which all the furniture looks as if it's almost ghost-like. And if mm -hmm. you look at it closely, it's because... Let's get up close a little bit. Okay. If you look at it closely, it's because those white lines are not actually white. There's yellow and pale blue and, blue, and right. dark blue and green. And in fact, 
that's not drawn on top of the red. The red is actually drawn up to those lines. Right. And those lines are actually the paint that exists below the plane of the red, which is on top. So mm -hmm. it's sometimes referred to as a reserve line. And that's a, not artistically very difficult to do, but it's, it's some trouble. And it was a very specific choice. And it also sort of indicates that he really must have thought this whole thing through before he did it, which sort of belies the feeling of the painting itself, which feels more I think spontaneous. That, I think that was a real trait for Matisse. I think he worked very hard to make things look very easy. So then the question emerges, why why all that effort to the lines look as though they are they look on top, but they're really underneath? Why Why would he have done such a thing? Well, I have my thoughts about this. And actually, instead of looking at the, those reserve lines first, I just want to point out that in the upper right-hand corner of the painting, we're missing a vertical line that would designate the corner of the room. You mean the upper left-hand The upper, corner. I'm sorry, the upper left-hand right. corner. Right, so the, actually the perspective space doesn't really make sense there. No, the it's, it's sort of dismantled. In fact, I think this whole painting is in large part about this sort of process of dismantling traditional linear, linear perspective. perspective. I mean, look at the chair in the lower right corner, the, the chair with the tall back. Yeah, that doesn't make much sense at all. No, as it moves away from us, the seat actually gets wider. It's in reverse right. of, of traditional perspective. And the table here. The we table is awkward. Have multiple viewpoints, sort of like we're looking down at the table and across at the room at the same time. So to go back to this reserve line issue, one of the issues that I know has been discussed in relationship to this painting is that the reserve line is a way of further dismantling our expectations of linear perspective or our desire to construct illusionistic space within this canvas. And the way it does that, and this is a little bit tricky, is to... Takes what's underneath and puts it on top. Well, that's right. The red, which if you look at it as the floor, for, for a moment, is got to be in back of the table, and yet the ta or these chairs, and the table and the chairs, however, are actually constructed of paint that is behind, in back of, literally, physically, in back of that red. So the ground is actually making the figures, and the figures are actually constructing the ground. By figures, you mean the chair not, and the table, right? Yeah. The objects in the t in the painting. Exactly. The objects should be in front of the floor, but right. in fact, they're constructed out of paint that is behind the floor. And so there is this kind of funny scrambling of the way that painting is is traditionally made or drawing is traditionally yeah. made. And what's amazing to me when I think about this is how it took so much effort to dismantle this tradition. Although when you think about it, the tradition is, by the time we get to Matisse, 700 years old, 600 years old, and so you know, it, it's not going to take one or two or three years or a couple of artists to dismantle a, a 600 year old tradition of conceiving of art as something that is like a window into a realistic world that in linear perspective aids the creation of that realistic world. It's going to take Cezanne, it's going to take Gauguin, it's going to take Van Gogh, it's going to take and it Matisse, still doesn't it's going to take work. Picasso. And it still, and doesn't, it still work. doesn't work. Because look, when I'm looking at this, even though I see that there's no line in the upper left, even though the entire canvas is painted red virtually, even though we have this reverse of the figure ground relationship, even though the linear perspective of the, of the, of the seat of the chair on the lower right is backwards. Even though we have all of these things corrupting, I still see this. I still see so, this space. So why did he do this? Is he playing with us? Is he saying, "Here's some space," but no, it's not there. I think that he wants us to become aware of the mechanics of, of what an artist does. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. what that process is, I think. He, mm -hmm. I think in some ways this is very modernist. What about he, our expectations? I think that's critical here, and he's and there he is playing with us.